In a previous video, I went over alpha decay and how that's one of the possibilities of radioactive decay or radiation that can be given off by an unstable nuclei, which is called a radioisotope or an isotope that will become radioactive or it'll give off a specific type of radiation. In this video, I'm gonna go through beta decay. And if you'd like a copy of these notes, they're in the description below. You can print this sheet of paper, which is just two sheets back to back. And then what you'll do is you'll fold it right down the middle and what will happen is beta decay on the inside. You'll have this, the three specific practice problems that we're going to go over. You'll have room to kind of draw a particulate view of what the nuclei look like in a beta decay. And some extra notes about how far it can travel in air and how it can be shielded or how much tissue depth that it can have. So let's just go over those properties first. So if I have beta decay... Beta decay is uh, kind of like a fast-moving electron. So if you look at the symbol, it's given the symbol beta. But what beta is, it's got no protons, no um, neutrons. And so the atomic number can't be anything, so they put a negative 1 because it's just a fast-moving electron. All right, so then what kind of uh, traveling distance does this beta particle have? Well, it can travel um, anywhere between 200... To 300 centimeters in air. It is a much smaller mass particle so it can travel a little farther and it can be even higher energy than just a normal one but they call them high energy beta or just normal beta. But on average they can go four to five millimeters um, of tissue depth. We'll keep it metric here uh, which is kind of I think around about maybe an inch I think or a half it's actually a half an inch of skin. The next thing is how do you stop them? So they're stopped or shielded by, um, or shielded, just means to stop the particle, shielded by quite a few things. You can have kind of heavier clothing. Um, you can have some kind of like, you know, thicker lab coat or gloves, as long as they're kind of a plastic glove. Um, so plastic type gloves. Um, otherwise, if they're a little bit higher moving particles, you'll need maybe a few um, millimeters of aluminum. Or if, if it's a little faster moving particles, because some are called high energy beta particles, you might need like plexiglass or maybe some thickness of wood. A common example of this is the carbon-14 isotope or radioisotope. And what that carbon-14 has is it has six protons. And then remember, from the previous video and other videos, if you take and take 14 minus 6, that's the number of neutrons. So it's eight neutrons. So that's just the list. And then what happens is it's going to emit a beta particle, or you can say a beta negative like that, radiation or particle, which is really just you know, a high, fast-moving electron. But this is the hard part about beta, beta decay or beta particles, is um, what's going to happen is the particle that's going to be left that should be more stable, the atomic number is going to go up, and the mass number is going to stay the same. So we'll go over that with a particulate picture as to how does that happen. So for this one, it actually emits a nitrogen that has seven protons and seven neutrons. So that's actually what happens with that one. So you might be saying, how does it go up in protons and like down in neutrons? So this is kind of an important thing I would write down about, um, kind of unique about beta decay, is that a neutron in the unstable nuclei is broken down into a proton and electrons. I'm just going to put E minus. So a neutron, I always kind of say a sort of sacrifice, and it's turned into a proton and electron. So that's how the proton count can go up and the neutron count can go down. So let's kind of draw this. And this one we can actually count it out correctly. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six protons. And this is going to be our carbon. So this is going to be our carbon-14. That means it's going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there's my, you know, my nuclei, the nucleus. 
of that unstable carbon isotope called carbon-14. And then what happens is it becomes stable by ejecting a high, you know, high-speed electron. So they call that uh, a beta particle. So they could say E minus, or this is just called a beta particle. And then what's left over is the proton count goes up. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven protons. And then the neutrons goes down. So that goes to seven neutrons. So I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so let's say that's the nuclei. And again, this new, uh, new isotope was, uh, let's put it right here, it was nitrogen, and it was seven for the atomic number and 14 for the mass number. And then again, that's your more stable uh, nuclei that may or may not decay. In this case, this one shouldn't decay any farther. So that's, again, the kind of tough part is that a neutron turns into a proton and an electron. So here's sort of that electron that comes off right here, and then you end up with the proton count going up by one and the neutron count going down. All right, so let's try some examples here. So I don't have an example um, like I did last time that was unique to what I just drew. So we actually have three unique examples here um, to do. So the first thing is if you if you have this and you notice again that the uh, the atomic number goes up, that's what kind of gives you a signal that it went from three to four that it has to be um, beta decay. So you put E, and then you notice how the mass number stayed the same. So it's another kind of proof that this is definitely beta decay. Now what if you had to figure out what was the reactant or the the unstable nuclei to start with? So you take the 39 and you have to have it um, be one less, okay? So if you kind of look here, this has to be 38. So you kind of still have like that adds up to be the other side, except for you subtracted this time. And then again, the top is just 90. And then what you need to do again is have a periodic table handy. So I'm looking for element 38. And element 38 is strontium. So I'll put SR. And this is one of the isotopes of strontium. Um, that were unstable. So this would be maybe a radioisotope of strontium. All right, let's do one more, and then we'll be done with beta decay. So what about technetium? Technetium can do quite a few things, but let's say it could go through a beta decay. So again, the, the proton count would go up by one, and then the mass number would stay the same, okay? Because remember, we sacrificed a neutron, but we made a proton. So that's why the mass number stays the same. And then we need to look up element 44. So we need to find a periodic table and find the element that is 44. So it's right here, it's ruthenium Ru, right there. Okay, so then we just put that into the box here. And again, again, you should check the math. So if you take 99 plus zero, you get 99. So it's the law of conservation. And then 44 and then negative one actually gives you 43. So that's beta decay, which is the second type. It's kind of the second most popular type of radioactive decay, um, kind of after alpha. And then gamma will be next in a separate video. And then I hope to make another video on positron emission, bombardment, and spontaneous fusion, and kind of how this all starts, which is this band of stability. How do we predict if an uh, isotope is going to be a radioactive isotope? So how do we know that? Um, and this band of stability is sort of your answer. The other thing that relates to um, radioactivity are the units of radioactivity, how to calculate the damage that it might cause, or even some calculations on half-life. So hopefully if you um, enjoy this video, you can watch a few other ones that I have about you know, gamma emission and other types of nuclear uh, chemistry. And good luck, chemist, and hopefully you can calculate your beta decay problems without any issues.